Let us for a few moments close our eyes, concentrate our attention on the Supreme Divine who is manifesting in our heart. Let us approach Him with great humbleness and pure love. Appeal to Him, pray to Him for the peace and welfare of the whole humanity. Shanti Hari Om Dachat Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Om Tapakaya Jadamasya Sarvadamaswarupine Tapakaya Jadamasya Sarvadamaswarupine Avatar Varishta Rama Krishna Yate Nama Asato Masat Gamaya Tamaso Majyote Gamaya Mrityor Mritangamaya Om Shanti Shanti Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all gods and goddesses. who came to establish universal religion, who integrated all the religions of the world, who taught harmony amongst various groups of people practicing different religions. Let us pray to the Divine Supreme to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from unreal to the real, to lead us from death to immortality. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. We have been studying the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, the book of immense spiritual instructions for practicing spirituality in the world. Sri Ramakrishna has given invaluable instructions for us to practice. Sri Ramakrishna himself was intensely practical. All the instructions he gave are meant to be practiced with all earnestness. There is worldly joy. People engage in worldly activities and get worldly joy. There is spiritual joy by 
participating in spiritual activities one gets spiritual joy to give an example we observed christmas eve holy mother's birthday wonderful spiritual activity what fine vibrations what fine atmosphere we could feel the worldly joy makes you rajasik and brings you down to tamasic level whereas spiritual joy keeps you in sattvic mode so that you can enjoy peace wonderful peace so these occasions give us opportunity to distinguish what is real joy and what not we can experience this joy more effectively if we cherish love towards god it's very difficult indeed very easy to say why it is not being possible for us to love god in spite of knowing the fact that mahatma has come and instruct and show the way to that abode of blessedness why it is becoming difficult for us to nurture that love why it is difficult for us to establish ourselves in that love towards god what exactly is the reason shri ramakrishna has pointed out very clearly why we are not able to love god because we are attached to the world the less we become attached to the world the more we love god shri ramakrishna gives a very good example to explain this suppose a man has gone to banaras from calcutta after finishing the pilgrimage he is returning the farther he proceeds towards his home in calcutta the farther he leaves banaras behind again if he proceeds farther towards banaras the farther behind he leaves his home that's all this analogy should make very clear our problem and solution both are there the nearer we approach to god the more we feel his divine love and kindness again shri ramakrishna explains this by giving an example a river when it approaches the ocean it increasingly feels the flow of the tides it is simply drawn with a terrific force into the ocean now 
it is made very clear the idea is given to us that we should love the divine we should desire him we must long for him we must aspire for spiritual joy true we know where exactly the spiritual wealth is we know that but how to get into that that's the point there is one stumbling block in our way to spiritual life in the practical sense though we all like to be spiritual it has not been possible for us to be so why again shri ramakrishna points out look i will show you everything i will show you but you have to act so like a loving mother leading the child holding its hand shri ramakrishna is holding all the spiritual aspirants literally he is leading them towards the spiritual glory so shri ramakrishna has pointed out that ego that is the trouble shooter as long as we are under the worst influence of the ego it is extremely impossible to love god so what so shri ram krishna suggests handle the ego properly first of all you must know who are the enemies on your way then you must take steps to get rid of them that's the way so our life in this world is to fight the enemies such as ego dwesh hatred anger krodh these are our worst enemies so hope somehow they have entered into our heart and they have made their permanent stay there as if this house belongs to them so we are in trouble we are surrounded by the enemies and we want to enjoy spiritual peace how it is possible unless you get rid of these enemies so shri ramakrishna points out clearly look these are the enemies take steps take bold steps be fearless i am there to help you i means shri ramakrishna he assures god helps he loves the devotees he loves them because they are his own children if the child cries for mother the mother responds otherwise she is not a mother at all so one way of handling this ego is to destroy this ego attitude through service seva our spiritual practices must be kept up with all zealousness if we give up the practices of japa and meditation 
but simply engage ourselves in work, the result would be egoism catches hold of us. And as a result of that, we will become the source of quarrels and disharmony. Quarrels and disharmony. The root is ego. So it follows, even though we are living in this world, we must practice dispassion. Without dispassion to the world, faith and love towards divine do not grow. So we must have dispassion. It's a most wonderful spiritual quality which we should establish in ourselves. To lose the ego in God is dispassion. What is the meaning of losing the ego? It means we have to become nobodies. We must wipe out all vanity and all sense of ego. Sri Ramakrishna said, when the ego dies, all troubles cease. What is the indication of the dying of ego? The person in whom the ego is dead, he always says, Not I, not I, but Thou, O Lord. That's it. The I is erased completely. No trace of I is there. then that spiritual person is perfectly qualified to have the realization of God, to have the vision of Sri Ramakrishna. See the life of Nag Mahasaya, one of the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. If you have not studied, please read his life. Most fantastic life. Every spiritual aspirant must read it. You will feel how he practiced spirituality to the maximum in his life. Nagmasha himself has provided a model for householders. Householders need not complain that, oh, we are householders, we are grihasthis. God is far away from us. No. God is very near to grihasthis than to the monks. Because grihasthis are always in trouble. So God is always ready to help them. Girish Chandra Ghosh, once he was talking to the friends, he said, You know Mahamaya, How terrible it is, how difficult it is to get away from Maya. Such Maya, he tried to bring Nag Mahasaya and Vivekananda in her net. She wanted to catch them, both. Mahamaya wanted to catch both Nag Mahasaya and Vivekanand in her wonderful, attracting nut. But what happened? Why she could not catch Nag Mahasaya? 
because he became smaller than the smallest so that maya's net cannot hold him in case of vivekananda he grew bigger and bigger so big he became one with the infinite and the net was too small to bind him so maya became powerless either to bind nag maharshi a great householder or to bind vivekanand a great monk so shri ramakrishna warns we must always remember that the lord is the doer he does things everything is done by him even the movement of blade of grass is by the will of god if ever the idea that i am the doer enters into your head then what happens shri ramakrishna says the lord instantly flies away all efforts then will be in vain so shri ramakrishna warns the spiritual aspirants to be careful let not the unripe ego ever enter into your heart always have the prayerful attitude pray to the divine that you may only be the instrument in the hands of the lord through his grace always look for divine grace then only will you become a real karma yogi karma yogi is one who does intense activity mind is kept firmly on god that is karma yoga it is seen before a great light lesser lights disappear even so before the effulgent glory of god the little glory of the ego will completely vanish as stars vanish when the sun rises so we must therefore practice the presence of god inside us how to do that constantly repeat divine name mentally always be aware that god is staying with you all the time it seems it is easier to love the world than to love god that is because the ego binds out sight so that we cannot perceive the beauty of god so this ego must be conquered it is always a falsifier what does it do it places itself on the throne which belongs to god and tries to hide god so long as the ego is on the throne we can never hope to see or love god so as i said earlier our enemies hatred and anger wherever these two are there dvesh krodh please note 
they are the signs of ego. That person is under the influence of ego. If a man hates anyone or gets angry with anyone, you may be sure that he has not conquered his ego and subsequently he cannot feel true love in his heart. What is this ego after all? A mere soap bubble. One blow will break it and reveal its hollowness. So we must get rid of ego and reach the state where we can say sincerely, not I, not I, but thou, but thou, O Lord. When we have been able to put down the ego, love of God will come of itself. So we talk of surrendering to God, Sharanagati. Complete self-surrender can come only when one is free from egotism, the most invulnerable enemy of man. The idea that I am so and so, my name is like that, my father is like that, my grandfather is like that. He wants to give more and more importance to his ego. That is the cause of repeated births and deaths. The more we can get rid of it, the more will we be able to realize our spiritual nature, which is obscured by this I. The first personal pronoun is at the root of all our miseries. Now it is all pinpointed. The one rogue responsible for all the miseries we are facing in this world is that ego. Hence our primary duty should be to get rid of it somehow or other. So what is spirituality? Standing on one leg, retiring to forest, fasting without taking any food. Do you consider them as spirituality? Spirituality can flourish only where there is no ego. This can be done by the service of the great, by good works without caring for results, by concentration and discrimination, that is vichar. Doing service is the easiest and the best. If you can place yourself at the feet of a true teacher, your egotism will gradually wear away by that very attitude of yours, of a servant. If you want the best result, better to have this idea, I am the servant. When you have this idea, egoism cannot raise its head. Because it, as soon as it tries to raise its head, immediately you feel, I am the servant. Then it crushes the ego. If a man actually places himself under the guidance of Sri Ramakrishna, he is sure at once to be saved by him, by all troubles, from all troubles. Sri Ramakrishna takes the full responsibility of such people who have surrendered themselves to him. He will handle nothing to worry. He worries for us. If only we care to remember him and dedicate our lives to him. 
So Sri Ramakrishna instructed to feel that God is a master and we the servants of God. When one is conscious of doing work, one should establish with God the relationship of servant and master. So much Sri Ramakrishna has given points how to control this ego, how to rise ourselves above this ego, how to become truly spiritual. And secondly, Sri Ramakrishna tells we should protect ourselves from bad associations. Thirdly, Sri Ramakrishna tells do your duties in the world perfectly all right. But then you must also fix your mind on the lotus feet of the Lord. Without your keeping the mind on God, your duties in the world will only give negative results. Instead of giving you salvation, they bind you more and more. You become completely influenced by Maya and Maya's net catches you without any difficulty. So Sri Ramakrishna tells do whatever you want in this world. Call anything you want as duty. Never for a moment forget God. Then only all these things carry value. Then read books of devotion. When you are alone and have nothing else to do, one party came some day. They were talking. I was just inquiring. Where is your husband? Why did he not come? You have come alone. Does he not want to come to the chapel? Oh, no, Swamiji. Uh, he remained in the home. What was he doing? Oh, he was watching TV. See? Unknowingly, how we kill ourselves. Watching TV, dirty things on it. As if you have got a lot of time. I would have appreciated if that person had told, Oh Swamiji, my husband was reading Bhagavat. I, was, I would have been immensely happy. But as soon as she uttered TV, my mind was completely withdrawn. Poor fellows. Every action is important. Every word we speak is important. We give importance to anything and everything in our life because we have come to Sri Ramakrishna. Because Sri Ramakrishna tells us to be careful, to be watchful, Then you will see how Sri Ramakrishna is guiding you, protecting you, giving you whatever you want. You get more than what you want. You have to say, enough, 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 oh Lord, enough, enough, enough. Please. Kubera's wealth will be poured upon you. You must know that. 
well let us try to practice as i told in today's my comments on teachings of shri ramkrishna the root cause of all troubles the trouble shooter is ego it is armed with two enemies helping ego enemies for our, for us our enemies helping the ego they are dwesh and krodh hatred anger where these two are there ego is very much there ego is ruling us not we we have become the slaves of the ego so as long as we are the slaves of ego we can't get rid of restlessness we can't get real peace we can't get spiritual joy with these words i conclude my talk my comments then i shall read a few passage then i will invite questions from you friday september 7 1883 Shri Ramakrishna and M were talking in the master's room at half past seven in the evening. No one else was present. Master said, "The other day I went to Calcutta. As I drove along the streets in the carriage, I observed that everyone's attention was fixed on low things. Everyone was brooding over his stomach and running after nothing but food, food, food." everyone's mind was turned to lust and gold i saw only one or two with their attention fixed on higher things with their minds turned to god master mahesh said the present age has aggravated this stomach worry trying to imitate the english people have turned their attention to more luxuries therefore their wants have also increased sri ramakrishna said what do the english think about god master mahesh says it they believe in a formless god sri ramakrishna said that's also one of our beliefs for a time master and disciple remained silent then shri ramakrishna began to describe his experiences of brahman shri ramakrishna said one day i had the vision of consciousness non dual and indivisible at first it had been revealed to me that there were innumerable men animals and other creatures among them there were aristocrats the english the muslims myself scavengers dogs and also a bearded muslim with an ardan very tray of ice rice in his hand he put a few grains of rice into everybody's mouth i too tasted a little another day i saw rice vegetables and other food stuff and filth and dirt as well lying around suddenly the soul came out of my body and like a flame touched everything it was like a protruding tongue of fire and tasted everything once even the excreta it was revealed to me that all these are one substance the non dual and indivisible consciousness another day it was revealed to me that i had devotees my intimate companions my very own thereafter i would climb to the roof of the kuti as soon as the bells on the conch shells of the evening service sounded in the temples and cry out with a longing heart oh where are you all come here i am dying to see you master mahesh 
question, well, what do you think of these visions? And Sri Ramakrishna asked Master Mahasaya, what do you think of these visions? Master Mahasaya replied, God sports through you. This I have realized, that you are the instrument and God is the master. God has created other beings as if with a machine, but yourself with his own hands. Master said, well, Hazra says that after the vision of God, one acquires the six divine powers. Master Mahasaya said, those who seek pure love don't want powers. Master said, perhaps Hazra was a poor man in his previous life and that is why he wants so much to see the manifestation of power. He wants to know what I talk about with a cook. He says to me, you don't have to talk to the cook. I shall talk to the manager of the temple myself and see that you get everything you want. Master Mahasaya laughs aloud. Sri Ramakrishna said, Hazra talks to me that way and I say nothing. Master Mahasaya said, Many a time, Sri Ramakrishna, you have said that a devotee who loves God for the sake of love does not care to see God's powers. A true devotee wants to see God as Gopala. In the beginning, God becomes the magnet and the devotee the needle. But in the end, the devotee himself becomes the magnet and God the needle. That is to say, God becomes small to his devotee. He appears before them, setting aside his powers. Both remained silent for some time. Master Mahasaya said, Why should your visions not be real? If they are unreal, then the world is still more unreal. For there is only one mind that is the instrument of perception. Your pure mind sees those visions and our ordinary minds see worldly objects. Master said, I see that you have grasped the idea of unreality. Well, tell me, what do you think of Hazra? Yam said, Oh, I don't know. Master laughs. Well, do you find me to be like anybody else? Yam said, No, sir. Master, like any other Paramahamsa? Yam said, No, sir. You can't be compared to anybody else. Master smiling. Have you heard of a tree called the Achina? It means unrecognizable. Yam said, no sir. Master said, there is a tree called by that name, but nobody knows what it is. Yam said, likewise it is not possible to recognize you. The more a man understands you, the more uplifted he will be. Yam was silent. He said to himself, the master referred to the sun at dawn and the tree unrecognizable by man. Did he mean an incarnation of God? Is this the play of God through man? Is the master himself an incarnation? Was this why he cried to the devotees from the roof of the Guti? Where are you? Come to me. I think we shall stop here. Now it's your turn to speak and discuss and any question to ask or any comments. Actually, the, all the trouble we are facing because of our identification with the body, either gross body or subtle body. Gross body is this uh, physical body. Subtle body is the mind. So, we are constantly identifying ourselves with the mind and uh, we are helpless. Even though we are divine essentially, 
but that divine nature is in its potential state. If we are able to realize our true divine nature, then we are able to disidentify ourselves with gross body, with the subtle body and the causal body. We are able to separate out of these things. We stand apart. I am not this. So why should I feel for it? So, it is not a story. He realizes the truth in meditation. And he literally withdraws himself from this identification. So, the question of attaining immortality arises only when we remain attached to body. And realizing our true nature means we no more are attached to any body, we are not these bodies which are perishable. I am that pure consciousness. Nitya, Shuddha, Buddha, Mukta. I am that pure Satchidananda. Existence, knowledge, bliss, absolute. I am that pure consciousness, spirit, bereft of all these things. I am that. So whenever I take body, I always say, it is my body. Suppose I am traveling in uh, Highway 94, and I am going in a lane, number two, I say, it is my lane. That fellow crossed me. What is your lane? For the time being you are identifying yourself, you are going in that lane, so you are calling it that your lane. So that means, whenever you say my lane, whenever you say my body, whenever you say my mind, that means you are separate from the mind, you are separate from the body. So, immortality is that by which once you know your true nature, then you are no more uh, be duped by the power of Maya. Once you know the reality, you are in perpetual joy. That's the nature of immortality. So immortality, it applies to the soul not to the body. Body is kshara. The consciousness is akshara. Akshara means imperishable. Kshara means perishable. Whatever you see in the manifested world, they all go back to unmanifest condition. Anything that gets form, gets into formless. It comes up, goes back. Comes up, goes back. That's all. The whole world is like that. Involution, evolution. Involution, evolution. Constantly going on. That's all. Now those things will be there. World means all these things together. It's called world. Unjust, injustice, good and bad, poison, non-poison, good trees, bad trees, mixture. World means like that. But you must be intelligent to handle it properly. Be like an ant, take only sugar, leave out the sand. Sand is a mixture of stones and sugar. But you have the attitude of ant, it takes only sugar, leaves out the sand particles. Like that, don't worry about the things going on in this world, because every mind is different. 
every mind is in different state of evolution so it is not in it is not possible to understand the function of all the different minds and we can't straighten it out nobody can straighten the world it is like a straightening the dog's curly tail so because of bad the good shines because of falsehood the truth shines because of darkness the light has got beauty you enjoy the light because of the darkness if there is no darkness at all if there is always 24 hours light only then you don't know the beauty of the light at all so it is true but holding on to spiritual ideal practicing spiritual disciplines at the same time doing things in such a way that they take you towards god that will not involve you more and more into the world like that you must intelligently manage otherwise you will suffer careless speech you have to suffer you see you have to when you are driving a vehicle you have to be careful so this human body is a vehicle the soul is there i am driving this vehicle if i know intelligently i can drive the vehicle nicely if a person is not intelligent he will meet with accident but everything is in his hands that freedom is there everyone is having that freedom to drive his or her vehicle in his or her own way but guidance is there guidelines are there instructions are given all these things are given by the spiritual masters look like this like this if you look on to those things it makes you easy without reference suppose you didn't have the teachings of mahatmas suppose you didn't have the models then everything you have to experiment from the beginning how difficult it is the mahatmas have come and they have made easy for us these poor fellows are suffering for nothing let them be shown a way so they come and show but in spite of their showing the way we are so egoistic oh we don't want god where is god who is that god if i don't earn money this god drops the money from the sky like that they argue <laughs> so you enjoyed the christmas very good all right we shall conclude january 1st is a very auspicious day shri ramakrishna blessed on that date all the devotees who were there at that time present he called them literally without any discrimination come everyone whoever is there come on because shri ramakrishna came to know next day he would pass away he would leave this body so before leaving the body he wanted to bless them all those people who were there and he called each one of them and touched their head each one's head everyone was in ecstasy that remained that state remained with them for 15 days it's not a one or two days and shri ramakrishna said i have given you what i have to give now it is for you to establish nicely now i have given you the glimpse make it your own make it your own by constant meditation by constant japa by constantly remembering god make it your own so it's called kalpatru day in uh, india a very big program will be done special puja and reading of bhagavat kalpatru day that uh, was uh, done by shri ram krishna at kasipur garden house where he passed away his body 
at least three to four hundred thousand people go there at that time. All Calcutta streets will be full of people. You can't go in. You can't enter inside. Everybody wants to have the darshan of Sri Ramakrishna on that particular day. So, starting early morning, three o'clock, people stand in queue to enter into the premises. Three, three to four hundred thousand people. No traffic that day in that road. Very, very eventful day. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire, worldly lust, raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself, O self, drown deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honour to thyself, give honour to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust and the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for Thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean, he is Thy servant, O sweet one. In Thy mercy, consider him as dust beneath Thy feet. Ah, how I long for the day when an instant separation from Thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with his desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence. Though it tears my soul lessened, O thou who stealest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from the darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere, may all be happy, May all be free from disease. May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtuous attain tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the freed make others free. May good betide all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.